Welcome into this uh, Thursday edition of Longhorn live stream. CJ and I thought we'd take about 30 minutes here and kind of go an overview of recruiting, take your questions, an overview to 25 uh, recruiting class right now, kind of positionally where, where things are at. So we'll take your questions. We're going to start kind of at, at, by position. We don't have a sponsor today. I got the Terry Black's hat on, UT boy. Terry Black's Barbecue. That's where UT boy's been to both of those uh, meet and greets. Uh, and thanks to all those who came out for that. Uh, but CJ, we're going to get we're going to get started. And we're just going to start at quarterback. I see your question, E. Kim. We'll get to that as we get closer to OL. And then we'll talk DL. Uh, quarterback, we're going to start at the top, KJ Lacey. Um, you know, look, he's going to be in town April 6th. He's going to be in town April 20th for the spring game. He will also make his official June 21st through 23rd. Um, pretty, pretty locked in the Texas right now, as locked in as you can be. Ole Miss, Auburn aren't giving up. We'll see if Alabama stays on that peripheral, see what they go after at quarterback in 25. Uh, but then there's also Keelan, um, Keelan Russell, who, uh, you know, Texas is invited to the April 20th spring game. And look, you got to have a contingency plan, right? You're not doing your due diligence if you don't. Duncanville is also an extremely talented program. Uh, Keelan, four-star quarterback out of Duncanville, has been committed to SMU since the summer, has a number of schools coming after him. So quarterback, we're, we think it's a one-man class, obviously. And obviously, it's K.J. Lacey's spot. Uh, and him coming to campus three times in three months is going to – it should lock this down for the Horns. Definitely. It absolutely should. Again, he wanted to get back to campus three times during the January to February time as well. Only made it once, was expected to come back in was Ryan Williams as well. Uh, we know that didn't happen when uh, Ryan cancels his Texas OB. But again, three times over the next three months should bode very well for the Texas staff and that relationship. Kind of simmer things down, kind of that rumor mill that we've heard throughout the winter. But again, this opportunity now leads into some good opportunity for Texas focus on the 26th class a little bit at the quarterback spot. Trey Hoon coming in April 6th. Uh, Will Griffin coming in April 13th as well. Uh, so a lot going on at the quarterback room. But right now in 25, the focus is on K.J. Lacey and making sure that everything settles in for him. And uh, R.J. Yarbrough, we're going to hit the wide receivers in a second. We see that question. Zane Pettit got yours. Kyle got yours on D-line. Uh, so running backs next. Jordan Davison told me last night he has his official visit date to Texas locked in. He's just not going to release that quite yet. We'll wait on him to release that visit date. Look, it's either going to be June 21st through 23rd when Marcus Harris comes in or June 14th through 16th. Uh, when uh, Ricky Stewart's in, uh, so that he he has uh, been at the top of the running back board, and he is right there out of modern day. Uh, Alabama and Ohio State is the main competition. Oregon's also in the picture. I spoke to Kylan Deer last night uh, mm -hmm. out of Quitman, Mississippi, a guy that's a short choice really likes. Uh, he was through Quitman um, in January, and they talk every day. He told me they talk every day that Coach Choice played in the league. Running backs get to the league. He knows. Uh, what he would do for him. I think Ole Miss is the team to beat. Deer is currently on a two-day unofficial visit to Florida. Uh, he's talked to Texas about the April 6th or 20th date, as well as a June official visit. Um, he's got one official visit locked in, those Texas A&M fighting Aggies, June 14th through 16th. Uh, Texas and Texas A&M have offered more prospects, uh, similar prospects, same prospects in 2025 than I can remember in recent memory. So, we may have a few more Texas versus Texas A&M battles, even if it doesn't come down to those two taking visits to the same both places. That'll be interesting. Then Ricky Stewart remains a big Texas lean. He's also got officials scheduled to SMU, Baylor, at the weekend before Texas. Texas June 14th through 16th. And uh, Ricky Stewart will also be on campus April 6th. Um, all right, so – we're going to take some questions now as we get cool, into Jerry, real quick, James Simon out of Shreveport, Louisiana, right. will be on campus. He confirmed that this morning right before I boarded the flight to get out here. Uh, but he will be out to Texas for the spring game uh, April 20th. That is out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Really talented running back. Recent also, also just dropped a top seven, which included Texas, Texas A&M, Alabama, LSU, Miami uh, as well. So another name on that running back board to keep an eye on. His father's a uh, co college coach at the uh, – uh, group of five level, I believe, or FCS level, obviously pre-existing uh, re relationship there with Tashar Choice for many years. All right, so this will lead us in the receivers. Uh, R.J. Yarborough, what's it going to take for Texas to keep five stars from leaving the state? 
and going elsewhere. I really want to keep DK Moore here. Uh, Texas would love to keep DK Moore uh, in state as well. Uh, we do believe DeCorian Moore will step foot on campus uh, here at some point in the spring at Texas, one of those April dates. I, I would bet on him stepping foot on campus in Austin, not definitely not ruling out an official visit. Texas will recruit him through the whistle. Recruiting through the whistle, uh, we it on, on, on Texas football started that slogan a couple of years ago, and it, it's going to ring true on this recruitment. Look, he's going to LSU or Texas, barring the unforeseen. Uh, I, not that a USC, somebody else won't be mentioned, uh, but this is this one's headed to the LSU Texas Battle Royale, which there is going to be a few of those as well. I'm sure we'll get to. Uh, but keep five stars. Look, um, Kalik Lockett is a, I guess, com, you know, ranked as a composite five star. When you add up all the industry rankings or whatnot, let's just call him a high four star receiver. Kelshawn Johnson, top 200 guy in the country. Uh, Kelshawn's coming in June 14th through 16th. Uh, then we have Kalik Lockett, 21st through 23rd. Andrew Marsh, June 14th through 16th. He'll also be on campus March 25th coming up. Uh, then you have Marcus Harris, uh, and you have Jamie French, who's now scheduled for 21st through 23rd. And it's a big one. All the time. It's not just to keeping the guys from leaving Texas. It's recruiting the best receivers you can. And people ask all the time, about player comparison on player X or Y or whatnot. Jamie French, to me, is A.D. Mitchell with more stop-start ability in space after the catch. That's what he is to me. So is he is he a cross between A.D. Mitchell and C.D. Lamb? Man, that's what he looks like to me, C.J. But uh, Texas has a lot of options at wide receiver in this class, and they're all four-star or five-star guys. Yeah, the, the, the April months should really be exciting at the wide receiving spot. Again, you you mentioned a couple of names there, Jamie French, Kalee Lockett, uh, Kelshawn Johnson, all coming in on the same weekend. You're also going to have a couple quarterback prospects at that same time. So you really get an idea of what that offense could look like over the, the next couple of years. Texas, again, has done this pretty strategically when it comes to those big spring visit weekends. When Arch Manning came in, you saw about 10 or 12 offensive line prospects from the state of Texas, plus some, some toys for the wide receivers and the tight ends out there uh, just to make an impression. And I think that's what this week is really for when you start looking about – uh, really these early spring visit windows. And then Taz Williams and Winston Watkins coming in for the spring game as well. Two other guys that Texas could be looking at uh, down the road to get back involved with a little bit heavier uh, as, as the, the cycle progresses. But it should be a very fun wide receiving room. And again, who wouldn't want to come play in this offense to throw to, to receive catches from, uh, from Arch Manning? And we just saw what kind of development Texas can put into the league. Uh, shook ones is Texas and Caleb Cunningham, wide receiver in Mississippi, communicating. Communicating, yes. Long shot, yes. Uh, that That's not one that I think I, – look, I think Jamie French is the top out-of-state guy. I think Marcus Harris, Sark, wants that Southern California uh, footprint always. And Marcus is at modern day, and Texas has been in the top one, two, or three for a long time in that recruitment. Uh, Texas went and saw Caleb Cunningham in January. They like Caleb Cunningham. Where that one goes, I'm not sure. I think we're looking at a uh, three-man high school class of wide receivers. Obviously, and then they go to the portal as well. Uh, tight ends is going to be interesting uh, before we, as we move down and get to these questions by position. Tight ends will be interesting because it's going to be rock, paper, scissors, man, on the June 21st <laughs> through 23rd visits. You got Amari Winston, committed, four-star. Keone Armstrong, jumbo tight end, poor man's Darnell Washington. When I say poor man's because he's 6'5 and not 6'7. Uh, Darnell Washington from Jasper. It may be an AM lean over Texas slightly. LSU's the third team there. And then Nick Townsend uh, on Texas football broke the news that Nick Townsend's coming in June 21st to 23rd for an official visit. I'm using official visit dates because that's kind of what's big right now. But all these guys, Nick Townsend will also be there uh, April 6th. Um, Keone Armstrong will be in town probably April 6th or April 20th. One of those two dates. He'll probably be in town. Uh, so Amari Winston uh, will be in town for the spring game. So three tight ends, two spots right now. We'll see if LinkedIn Cure from uh, Woodland, uh, from Kansas when he visits, I believe, CJ, March 22nd. If a right. fourth tight end legitimately finds his way into the mix. Yeah, no, that's the the one I was going to mention because we know we've heard a lot about Keoti Armstrong, Nick Townsend, and obviously Emory Winston. Uh, if, if if for whatever reason Texas needs to look outside the state for that second tight end, Lincoln Cure is coming to campus during that March twenty second seven on seven date. 
uh, in which you'll see a lot of teams kind of cycling through the, the campus and facilities and stuff like that. Lincoln here coming in with California power uh, could be a pretty meaningful weekend for the Longhorns to go along with what might be uh, a very busy April as we as we've been talking about but Lincoln Cure is an interesting prospect I really like Keody Armstrong the way that he complements what we what we see right now from Emory Winston that two tight end set is really impressive I think you're going to see a little bit more of Texas pursuing that match like we see right now with Gunnar Helm and uh, Amari Nye Black all right so E. Kim question uh, does Texas take both 2025 Coleman brothers from Cedar Hill if they are ready to commit and f- also for D line for 25? All right, Kim, that's a great question. I, great I don't question. think the offensive line has been decided yet. Look, there's a number of prospects now uh, that have official visits locked in with Texas. That means they'll also be on campus in the spring. I think John Mills out of San Francisco, St. Ignatius is a take right now as an interior offensive player. Obviously, Michael Fasusi is the top tackle on the board. Uh, Texas has Jonte Newman, the tackle from Bridgeland, uh, locked in for June 14th through 16th. Then you have, um, you know, you have some wild cards in there as well, but Jackson Christian, a guard tackle, swing guy, they'll probably play guard from Port Natchez Groves is June 21st through 23rd as well. Um, Tyler Thomas from Dickinson, June 21st through 23rd as well, will be at AM the week prior, as will Jackson Christian. Uh, so those, you know, you see AM has to hit on these offensive line I mean, in this class. Oklahoma is trying really hard on Fasusi, obviously. Uh, Jordan, the Coleman brothers, man, you know, look, I was there today. Jordan Coleman squatted 600 pounds and Devin did, I think, 580. Um, and they're large humans and they're, and, and they're not bad weight. They're not carrying much bad weight. Uh, so I, I think the spring evaluation is going to be part of this process, guys. And then you have so many out-of-state wild cards uh, right now. You know, Nick Brooks from Iowa, one of the top tackles in the country, says he's coming in at some point in April. We'll see if that happens. Uh, Kyle Flood went in uh, through Cedar Rapids, Iowa, um, in January. You have to be really good to get uh, Kyle Flood into Iowa when there's so much talent in Texas, California, Deep South on the offensive line. Uh, Mentioned Deep South, Juan Gaston from uh, Atlanta Westlake, home of Cam Newton. Westlake's had a Heisman Trophy winner, national champion there. Juan Gaston scheduled to visit the 14th through 16th. Texas thinks that's a long shot from everything I hear. But he's been on campus before, wants to take an official visit. Um, so, CJ, there's so many guys. And there's Josh Petty out of the Atlanta area who's going to visit with California Power March 22nd. That could very easily turn into an official visit in June. I think that's a kid Texas would have a legit shot with after he makes an unofficial. So a lot of numbers for five spots. There's going to be more than 10 official visitors on the offensive line in June. So there's going to be some tough decisions that have to be made for Flood. That's exactly where I was going to go. Texas right now has about 26, 27 officials locked in at the moment. Nine of them are on the offensive line. So to get an idea of where they want to go from there, that, that June month is going to be very important for Kyle Flood and Steve Sarkeesian to kind of dwindle those numbers down to who they want to add into this class. Uh, again, a, a, about a five, five guy class to continue the depth and talent on campus, which has blossomed into probably the deepest spot on this Texas roster. It's going to be a very busy a uh, couple of weeks at that back half of June, you know, three coming in in June 14th, uh, six coming in that final week for June 21st through 23rd. An interesting weekend here, Jerry, and I know we're we're focusing on 25s, but two two big talents coming in April 13th on the 2026 offensive line, Felix uh, Ojo out of Mansfield and Papunka Dua Katoa out of Ulysses Trinity, 6'5", 380 pounds, really talented prospect. Well, I'm glad you brought that uh, that up because uh, the top offensive lineman on the board in 26, John Turntine the third out of North Crowley, total freak. I think he was the best football prospect long term in Texas, 24, or five or six class I saw last year. And that doesn't mean he's going to be the highest drafted. I do think he's the top prospect. Uh, John Turntine told me last night he will be in town either the sixth or the 13th. So we we'll go. probably see that on the 13th. Uh, but if he wants to come in on the 6th, if that's what the schedule is, then Kyle Flood's not going to say, no, sir, you have to come in on 13th. It's not going to work that way with turn time. Uh, but John turn time will be on campus as well in April. And I tell you, all, all you recruiting fans out there, if you have not watched John turn time's film, if Do you want to know how good he is, go watch his sophomore huddle, okay? And then go find Kelvin Banks' sophomore huddle off his of Kelvin Banks' huddle page and watch him back to back. And you'll have in a true appreciation 
for how good John Turntine is as a sophomore in high school. Uh, Kelvin Banks' physicality went up about 10 notches from junior to senior year. John Turntine uh, has that physicality at a young age to go with great feet, length, frame, everything. I posted some photos on, on TexasFootball.com recently, but a uh, total stud prospect, total stud. We'll be one of the top 10 players in the country. Um, shook ones, uh, we'll start taking questions here and we'll get into some of the other positions. Let's hit on linebacker now. We've had a couple of questions. Shook ones, legit shot with Matai Tagoa. His film was impressive. Um, I exchanged some messages with him, CJ. I'll tell you this about his film. Um, and I think Texas has a legit shot, South Southern California footprint now with Johnny Nansen, who was after him at Arizona already. Legit shot for Texas. San Clemente, it'll be a terrible recruiting trip to go take to watch him, by the way. I think, and, and I don't use this lightly. I say this, you know, I, I never use the term Derek Johnson. He's not Derek Johnson, but he's a poor man's Derek Johnson. I'm telling you, I think that kid's this good because his snap count anticipation is off the charts. His physicality at 195-ish pounds right now as a junior in high school is really high end. His range, pursuit, uh, he takes really good angles. He closes. Uh, his tape, he can rush the passer. He can play in space. He plays some safety. Uh, he is a tremendous linebacker prospect, uh, CJ. I think, uh, I, think he is, I think he's big time and will be about as good as there is out, outside backer in the country in this class. Yeah, I've been really interested to see just how the approach from Johnny Nansen has translated so far since he's joined the Texas staff. We've talked a little bit about the long levered uh, uh, line, linebacker prospects that we've seen offers extended to. Now, how does he get them to campus right now that Southern California and even Samoan ties that we've seen throughout a number of prospects so far are really coming through to uh, fruition? Of course, we still have Riley Pettijon and Elijah Bo Barnes uh, high up on the priority list as well, as well as Anthony Williams from Shadow Creek in the bag already so how does this linebacker class really start coming together and filling out it'll be interesting because again texas only took one line one linebacker in the 2024 yeah. class to ensure that that depth is there i know they had a, you know four and a half or five from the 23 class but to make sure that you can get back to that elite level of uh sustained depth this class is going to be very important for johnny nansen uh somebody asked about some predictions put in for elijah barnes and riley pettish on the texas Look, at twofold, I think Texas is in good shape with those guys. I'll say as far as the predictions go, just to, uh, just so people have an understanding of our industry, some companies do that as a, a day for all their uh, team sites uh, to put in predictions as a sub-selling machine. Um, just just be real. That's the way uh, this business works. So if you go look at when those predictions are made, go look at how many of the other team sites made similar predictions on prospects. There's a reason about 80, 90 guys got predicted to certain schools that day. So I don't think it has anything to do. I'm just going to be real with you guys as always. doesn't have anything to do with absolute thinking these guys are going here. It's kind of a company-wide thing sometimes. So I just uh, just to let you guys in on know how this industry does work from time to time. Tricks of I, think trade. Texas, I, I, I think Texas is in a good spot with Riley Pettijon. He, he'll be on campus for the spring game, June 14th through 16th official visit. I think Florida State's very much in it. I think USC is very much in it. I think AM's trying. Uh, and I think Auburn might be your fifth. I think Ohio State also can and find their way into that mix. Ryan Day did come by the school. And, and Ohio State has recruiting momentum in this class. Uh, uh, so uh, Elijah Barnes, I think Texas is in a good spot with him. I'll be interested to see when he schedules up that official visit. Uh, he'll be on campus in April. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, Texas, Florida State, I mean, Ohio, he's going to go visit Ohio State in March. So, um, I, I think there's those teams are in the mix strongly for Elijah Barnes. I'm not sure AM really hit that unofficial out of the park. Uh, I think they're still in it, though. I could see him getting uh, getting an official visit. So I think linebacker, look, and you have Anthony Williams committed, although he's still going to kind of look around a little bit. Then you have Jonathan Cunningham, Javar Thomas, kind of those long levered guys on the periphery. And uh, we'll see what happens. As a guy like a Marco Jones out of California, is he more of an edge? Or, uh, prospect long term in Texas eyes when he gets on campus. Uh, then I'll throw another one out. There's a kid, Hayden Moore, who Texas offered way back. Um, he's a line, um, sorry, he's a 2025 uh, prospect out in California. And he's, he says he's still uh, talking with Texas. So uh, that'll be interesting to see what happens there um, with him. Uh, you know, Justin Yarbrough, when do camps for recruits kickoffs? 
kick off and when do we sign 20 do we sign 24 25 players this year cj i'll let you uh, uh address that real quick while i look up a message i got from a recruit yeah camps kick off normally right uh right in the middle of june right in the early part of june you'll see them each weekend uh during the june months while texas is preparing for official visits the coaches will also be getting youngsters to the camp uh, this is a great opportunity for a lot of young kids to get in the eyes of the texas coaches if you talk about troy hewn and his uh, recruitment and relationship with the Texas staff. It started with throwing in front of the Texas coaches before he had ever played a varsity down. He got in the eyes uh, and ears of AJ Milby and, and Steve Sarkeesian just a little bit. They invited him back to a game uh, this year. And now look at him. He's probably going to be the number one guy on the Texas board for the 2026 class at the quarterback spot. So you'll be looking at this camp cycle is one that a lot of prospects can really start to, you know, help out their stock for guys that didn't get to see uh, the, the Texas staff swing by in the spring as well. Uh, by the way, I said the wrong name, and that's why I wanted, I wanted to check because we got so much going on. Hayden Lowe is an edge kid out of Oaks Christian in Westlake Village in California. A lot of talented players have come through there in multiple sports, by the way, golfers, whatnot. Uh, but Hayden Lowe is a kid, 6'4", 4, that Texas offered – uh, in the way back machine, it feels like in, in this cycle. But he's, he remains in contact with Texas. So we'll see if he gets on campus this spring. A lot of guys like that. Um, so I think, believe we got a super chat uh, as well, uh, Matthew, our producer, uh, if he'll bring that up. George Lopez, thank you very much for the super chat. How would you rank the OL and re wide receiver recruits in this cycle? Great content as always. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that, George. How would I rank the OL? You know, I rank them by position, first of all, the offensive tackle, interior offensive line. I don't think there's going to be a center in this class. That doesn't mean somebody that is signed in this class couldn't take some snaps and try at center, right? I mean, Cole Hudson never played center uh, before he came to Texas. He said in high school he wanted to play center, though, and that always stuck with me. Uh, I, Connor Robertson played more tackle in high school, right? So, um, I, I think Fasusi's on the top of the tackle board. Uh, Texas really likes Jonte Newman out of Bridgeland. He's got that length. Uh, he's got those near 35-inch arms, 6'4 and a half, 280. Uh, got tackle feet, got physicality. He's originally from Lexington, Mississippi. Would have gone to Holmes County if he hadn't moved here uh, right before high school. Um, I think Oklahoma, A&M, all those guys are in it. Uh, you're going to see a lot of those similar battles, by the way. Texas, Texas a and and Oklahoma on offensive linemen in this class. Interior offensive line, that's a tough one for me. I, I, I'm actually the same as like Texas and some of these schools. I want to see these guys in the spring, see see what they do on the track with the shot put. Who's becoming a little more explosive, right? Who's putting in the work between now and spring football? I think Jackson Christian's a very good prospect. I think John Mills is as well. The Coleman twins are triplets, two of them. Uh, are so intriguing because they're natural power. Um, and I think they they play for Marcus Hutchins, former Texas offensive lineman, who actually went to DeSoto High, coaches at Cedar Hill. I would love to have him on and talk about that. But I think they're younger in their development, and Marcus Hutchins is pushing those guys uh, because Devin Cole was a D lineman turned offensive lineman. So, um, you know, that, that that's going to be tougher. I want a little more time before I really start putting these guys in a order because I'll be honest. Coming to college, co colleges haven't yet either. They're still looking yeah. at these guys, and they have a board, and they may have guys two, three, four, right now five, but it's subject to change by the time the June official visits roll around, CJ. That's exactly it, and I think that's why you saw the June or the January Junior Day was so important for the Texas staff. Not necessarily to sit there and schmooze over the possible recruits and top top targets and stuff like that, but to get measurements, sit there and talk about football a little bit, to understand what they are as humans and, and, and guys off the field. Now you get to walk back in those campuses on the spring and say, all right, put the pads on and let's see how you jump off the ball or let's see what kind of body transformations and developments that you have uh, progressed with. And I think that's going to be interesting. Uh, again, it's going to be a big June month for the offensive line and at this point, Jerry, I think you're going to look at an offensive line right now with the way things are trending and be very happy at the end of the cycle. Yeah, I think there's going to be five guys in that offensive line class. Outside shot six, we'll say five. Um, at Math 12, I wanted to answer this question. You don't have to bring it up, Matthew. Horn fans, 224. This one's asked a lot. Uh, bit of a random question from Math 24. Do you have any Jersey – he's a Jersey Village grad – and ask any stories from Jersey Village. The one recruiting story I always stick with with Jersey Village is, is Selvin Young picking Texas over Oklahoma? Um, I just I heard through multiple college coaches back at that time and the high school staff at Jersey Village how P 
pissed off Bob Stoops was that Selvin Young went to Texas over OU. Bob Stoops was dominating that series um, and dominating it on the field, right? And Matt Brown was winning every recruitment in the state, almost it seemed like, that, that, that Bob Stoops and those guys went head-to-head -head on. And that was one that I think Oklahoma thought they had. They thought they were going to win out and get Selvin Young. And then Matt Brown being is the best recruiter I've ever seen uh, in my years doing this, um, it came in and uh, pulled the rug on OU and Selvin Young signed with Texas. And the rest is history. He was crying on the field in the Rose Bowl with confetti coming down on his face. So uh, that was that was one of those from Jersey Village that's always remained with me. Uh, so Horn fans, 224. I know it's early, but predict the finish for the 25 recruiting class. Do we have a shot at number one? Um, all right, CJ, I'll let you go first and I'll follow up on this. Listen, it's going to be really tough to top what LSU has cooking right now down there in the bayou. Uh, really, really impressive uh, class to start when you talk about, you know, Bryce Underwood and the start that they have to that class at the moment. Uh, I think Brian Kelly's, you know, feeling the heat and also seeing an opportunity to jump and make a big splash in the SEC now that Nick Saban's gone. He's just as Texas is, is looking at it like, all right, who's joining Georgia atop of the conference? I think they're going to be in, in consideration. Georgia, of course, and Ohio State, too, with two five-star cornerbacks already in the mold. Yes. It's going to be tough treading for the Longhorns. They're going to make an out-of-state splash, I think, a five-star guy or two to even be in that conversation right now because I do think right now the in-state guys with that five-star caliber rating, uh, aside from Michael Susi, it's going to be a difficult – you know, he'll decline for a number of those guys. Devin Sanchez locked in with Ohio State to Corian Moore. That's going to be a tough pull. If they're able to do so, that's a big swing in favor for Texas. I, I still think top five's on the table 100% with the way this class has started. And I think for a number of these guys in the class, you'll start seeing some big time uh, rankings adjustments with Brandon Brown, Lance Jackson, and Emory Winston. Yeah. And I, I think Texas will finish anywhere between three and seven. Yeah. Uh, and one of the reasons is here's the reason for me. You know, Georgia had, what, 28, 29 guys in that class last year. You're going to have to get up into that 27, 28, 29 number, I think, realistically, to have a shot at the number one class. Even though some people only may count the top 18, 19 in the class, uh, that depth in class for those that don't. The, you know, ESPN ranks class is different than on three. 24-7 uh, ranks class is different. Uh, than ESPN and and then rivals the same. So everybody's a little different in how they rank recruiting classes. Uh, but my my issue for Texas is I see a 24, 25 man class. I don't see that 27 to 28, 29 man class uh, to where you have a real shot to be number one. I think if Texas goes gets that number, they're going to be knocking on the door at the end of the yeah. day if they have a good season on the field. Um, and, and it's a E. Kim's point. Keep stacking top five classes. That's the name of the game. Absolutely. And I don't think you want Texas to go to a 30 man class. No. You want to have that leeway to go pick and prod some of those big time portal guys like we see in this offseason for positions of need that need it immediately. That's where Texas really makes its money. So if you want to look at the high school recruiting rankings and really take a big conclusion from it, look at that average recruiting ranking and see what that composite lines up to when it comes to the other schools uh, uh, in that same area or ballpark as the Longhorns. Um, so got a question here about – we've got a few about wide receiver position. Uh, but let's go this one. Who's on the wide receiver big board, Nolan, 326 p.m.? Uh, look, I think the guys that have scheduled official visits, I think D.K. Moore is the number one. DeCorian Moore is the number one receiver. Sark's been very transparent. He even told a high school coach this in January on a school visit. Uh, and that's a four-star receiver that's a scheduled official visit to Texas. Sark was very transparent. That's what you like about him, right? He's genuine. He's transparent. Press conferences, whatnot. He is with high school coaches. Said, look, kid at Duncanville, we're going to recruit until uh, the ink is dry. Even though the ink's not dry anymore. We'll still use that term, right? Coaches still use that term. So DK Moore, DeCorian's at the top, and, and I get it. He should be. Then you look, Jamie French, I think, is, the, is a stud, stud out of state and a stud player that's coming in now in April and June 21st through 23rd. I'm a huge Kelshawn Johnson fan because of the speed. If you like what you just saw at the Combine, Kelshawn Johnson may run 10-3 one day, runs 10-6, and he doesn't even train for the yeah. 100 meters. He goes from football to basketball, which uh, they should be playing right now, I would think. They should win state in 3 again in basketball. So he didn't even start track until after spring break. So he's he's a month behind all the other guys that run track uh, right after football. I love Kelshawn Johnson, Andrew Marshall on that board, and Marcus Harris. 
I mean, I think that's a pretty good look at the a wide receiver board headed in the spring. Can that change a little bit with spring evaluation period? Sure. But uh, you look at who's locked in for official visits right now. Um, you know, and, and I think that's pretty good. Uh, we got room, time for a couple more questions. We've got to do about 30, 35 minutes today. Just wanted to give you guys a little taste of recruiting today if you needed it. Michael Rodriguez, with the hot recruiting battles between Texas and LSU, how likely could this battle turn into a pretty good rivalry on the field? Look, I, I'll say this. and You hope it – oh, sorry, I mean, I forgot Kalik Lockett. Kalik Lockett, obviously, in there. I was talking about guys. Thank you, Roger G. Kalik Lockett's right there. He's got that June 21st through 23rd official visit scheduled. Those are your guys uh, for Texas right now at wide receiver. Uh, Michael Rodriguez, with the hot recruiting battles uh, between LSU and uh, Texas, could, how, how likely could this battle turn into a pretty good rivalry on the field? On the field will be interesting. How often is Texas and LSU going to play, CJ? But I can I tell you a lot. With Corey Raymond, Frank Wilson, Bo Davis, and Blake Baker, Bo Baker, uh, being on the LSU staff, that's why it is Blake Baker on the LSU staff. It's a it's going to be a recruiting rivalry because yeah. Texas's path in Louisiana just got tougher the day that Frank Wilson and Corey Raymond got back together in that state. Okay, then Bo Davis, obviously years of recruiting in that state as well. Uh, so recruiting in Louisiana just got a little tougher. Um, and those guys all have extensive experience recruiting in Texas. Obviously, Frank Wilson at LSU was a head coach at UTSA. Um, I mean, those are some guys that have two decades of, re of recruiting experience at a high level. Uh, so that there are going to be some recruiting battles. I'll tell you one guy we haven't talked about. I, I spoke with two people close to Dorian Bruce recruitment. Uh, June 14th, 16th, or 21st, 23rd. He's going to officially visit. I think Texas expects him on campus. Um, in, in April as well. But Corey Raymond coming back to LSU, man, he went right into Conroe. Uh, uh, Bruce's dad ran track, a stud Olympian out of LSU, Klein Force. LSU visited LSU. LSU will get an official visit. You have Zion Williams at the line who's going to be at LSU this weekend. Uh, Dylan Battles at LSU this weekend. Tyler Thomas is at LSU this weekend. Jonah Williams from Galveston Balls at LSU this weekend. Big news there last night, by the way, Jonah Williams. April 6th, unofficial visit to Texas. Big lean to OU. Texas isn't giving up on that one. And Jonah says he'll officially visit as well. LSU, Texas, going to have a lot of recruiting battles. Uh, we got, we're got we about to have to get going uh, today. Uh, but CJ, uh, it just I, I've thrown a lot at it. I've forgotten some names. But we, we wanted to give the Texas fans 30 good minutes of recruiting info. What are kind of your thoughts closing out today? Yeah, I think it's very strategic and by design to get the last visit for the Texas officials, uh, that June 21st through 23rd weekend is going to be big. Uh, it, it's obviously the biggest weekend that Texas has had the last three cycles as well. You kind of look at the April month, you see the big one at the beginning, the spring game as well. But that April 13th window is, to me, is very interesting. Looks like it's going to be 2026 centric as well as some uh, prime big targets from the 2025 class from out of state to get a little bit more face time. Uh, that's going to be interesting to me as well. So uh, the, the strategy and kind of precision in which the staff is operating with has been jumping off the page to me so far. Yeah, so we have 18 official visitors. I'll close with this, guys. 18 official visitors right now locked in for June 21st through 23rd. I see nary a three-star. Maybe Tyler Thomas because he missed his junior year. Cade Phillips, Shanklin, Lance Jackson, the commitment. All these guys, to me, four-star prospects. You look at that June 14th through 16th, uh, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys on that list. Nary a three star, in my opinion, man. I mean, this, this official visit uh, visits are loaded. Uh, we didn't even talk about Brandon Brown. We'll visit uh, D, uh, March twenty second out of O'Galley. I he may be a five star guy for for me guys long term. Yeah. Then he'll officially visit June fourteenth through sixteenth. Um, and those these D line offers, I wrote about this on ontexasfootball.com. If you didn't see it, Derry Norris. These guys have talked to Kenny Baker and to Shard Choice. Um, the the edge the edge D lineman out of Warner Robins Isaiah um, uh, Isaiah Brown I spoke with him last night he's talking to Kenny Baker talking about visits so Kenny Baker's getting his feet on the ground in contact I love recruiting the Sunshine State Texas put out two offers on the D line March fifth and have three D line offers in Florida in this class so let's see how many of these guys they get to campus CJ and I'll have it we'll have it all covered for you 
uh, at On Texas Football here on TexasFootball.com, uh, social media, whatnot. We don't have a we don't have a sponsor today, but UT boy, I thought I'd wear Terry Blacks for all the people that came to Terry Blacks this year for our two get-togethers. It was awesome, and we'll see you again soon. So for CJ Vogel, I'm Jerry Hamilton. Uh, bring the rest of those recruiting questions, coffee and football in the morning, Longhorn live stream Sunday night. Ah, we're going to have a special guest for everybody. All right, you guys have a good day. Y'all have a good one.